Welcome back, Wargamers. Today we have a very special treat. This is a short video on how to handle what happens when your D&D party encounters that dreaded 30 to 300 orcs. And the other night I borrowed my friend Brian's D&D crew and their characters, and we did a little what-if scenario where their party was traveling through the wilderness and their fighter in the party was the lieutenant of a group of cavalry, 20 of whom were archers and 20 of whom were lancers. And they spotted a convoy or caravan in the distance, a little less than a mile off. And so they went to do some scouting and snuck around and got close enough to see that the caravan consisted of a large band of orcs, two wagons, and then a group of about 20 human slaves carrying baskets and bundles piled on top of their heads. In order to rescue these human prisoners, the party decided that they would ride out to meet this caravan and attempt to do battle. While they were doing so, the monk and thief characters left the party to sneak around and come up on the caravan's flank. Now they're traveling through tall grass, which was mostly open with a few small copses of trees. So the party was quickly spotted by the caravan and a group of orcs ran out to meet them. Finch, the fighter, took charge of the cavalry and had them split up into four groups, as you can see here in the picture. And the orcs approached with two groups of crossbowmen and a group of guards with axes and pole arms in the center with the subchief. And as they approached, the cavalry waited, and the impetuous orcs ran forward until they were within crossbow range. And as they prepared to fire, the archers let loose. Now the archers had a longer range than the crossbowmen. And so we're able to go ahead and fire first. Because there were two groups of the cavalry, they each split and chose a group of crossbowmen as their targets. And as the chainmail rules show us, each group of archers was able to do three casualties to each group of or crossbowmen. Now, this was not enough to cause them to make a morale check due to excess casualties. So they continued to prepare to fire, and they also fired, and they also caused some casualties amongst the cavalry. Now, as they got closer, the cavalry lancers decided to charge forward, and unfortunately, the orc crossbowmen were unable to pass their stand their ground check, and so they turned and fled. The cavalry was close enough that they were actually able to run these orcs down and demolish them in hand-to-hand -hand combat, melee combat. Afterwards, the cavalry spun about in order to face the guards and the subchief, who also then took another round of shooting from the cavalry. Oops, I grabbed the wrong one, didn't I? The cavalry archers dropped another round of arrows upon the guards, did some more casualties, and at this point they did lose enough 
to have to make a morale check due to excess casualties, and they turn to flee as well. And when they did so, the Lancers were able to charge them and destroy them. After this, uh, with only a few casualties on the side of the Lancers, they rode towards the group of Orc spearmen and polearm bearers that were guarding the wagons. While this was happening, the Orcs set up a line to protect their cargo. Well, the leader climbed up in a wagon to exhort his followers to prepare to defend against the charge from the cavalry. Unfortunately for them, the thief and the monk were able to sneak around behind and toss a flask of oil and achieve a direct hit upon the leader standing up in the wagon complete immolation, and because the wagon was loaded with flammable materials, the wagon just simply went up in flames. At which point, the cavalry archers fired, causing enough casualties for the orc guards to make a morale check fail and flee because their leader had been killed. At which point, the cavalry lancers were able to, again, once again, ride them down and the prisoners were rescued. All of this took just about as much time as it took for me to describe this to you, although the players did take a little bit more time in deciding upon their strategies. But as you can see, chainmail scale combat can be slotted right into an adventure, uh, wilderness adventure, exploration, um, random encounter. Obviously, it is very important that the large force of orcs be predetermined as to how many they are, how they are armed, and the dungeon master needs to make a few small preparations, such as these cards, in order to be able to convincingly portray the battle. Uh, we did this, obviously, Theater of the Mind. It was an online game. But you could also do this with these cards just at your table if you needed to. Uh, you don't need miniatures. You don't have to have the little any kind of little chits. You don't need a hex map. You can quite literally handle this sort of combat right off the cuff with the rules at your fingertips in just a few minutes. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. I will be creating a bit of a follow-up video on how to actually go ahead and prepare this sort of situation. But as a proof of concept, it worked. It worked very well, and it went quickly, and I think it was a big success. So thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time.